In this short video, I want to go through Diffusion in action and how I've used Diffusion with one of my clients. I want to go through a particular case and look at how we went about using this and then also how we're able to go out and generalise this understanding of uh, the use of Diffusion in other areas. So the case looks like this. A, a, uh, a young lady, somewhere in her 30s, was... Uh, quite successful in her job. She was quite a professional woman. But what she found is that she was going out and feeling overwhelmed, overburdened, highly stressed in the workplace. She was somewhat of a perfectionist. She did go out and uh, find that she was volunteering for lots of jobs that, that were, were out of her, I suppose, juris jurisdiction in, in her position. And she found that the more she would take on the worse her stress would get, but she couldn't stop herself from volunteering. And so what we did is we broke down what was occurring in meetings when she would generally go out and volunteer. So what we found is that in, in a meeting space, what, what would happen, there would be a meeting and there would be the... Uh, uh, there would be the question of who's going to volunteer for this job that, that was brought up in, in the, in the uh, meeting. So there was a volunteer request. And being a, a high achiever and being someone who does a fantastic job and that perfectionistic quality that she held uh, meant that she was actually experiencing a lot of thoughts around her having to go out and do that or that she should be doing that. So, so we broke down what were some of the thoughts that she was experiencing so that we, we could then begin to diffuse from that. So some of the thoughts were, uh, I'm expected to volunteer. That was a big one that kept coming up. You know, there's an expectation on me. The other one was my, my, my manager's going to judge me. And as you can imagine, being perfectionistic and, and, and being a high achiever, that was a really important one. That was one that was really pushing her around. Uh, there were other ones about nobody else will volunteer. So no one else will volunteer. And what would actually happen is when we broke down the situation, there would be a call for a volunteer in the meeting and there was a tendency for everyone to do this. And as you can imagine, she was one of them that she'd be sitting there, but she wasn't able to hold that, uh, that discomfort of silence and not putting her hand up for very long. So her mind was going out and quickly saying, I'm expected to do so. My manager's going to judge me. No one else, we, uh, no one else will. I should be putting my hand up. Uh, and, and you know, I'm letting the team down and so on and so forth. There was also a little bit about this is unbearable. There was a thought about this is unbearable, it's too difficult to sit this out. And so inevitably she put her hand up. Now, we broke this down, we looked at what's actually happening here. What would happen is the moment she puts her hand up, all of these thoughts would go away. They, they'd vanish. It, it no longer... Uh, the, the I'm expected to do so no longer was there. The manager would judge me was no longer there. The no one else will was no longer there. And in actual fact, then they were replaced with, oh my goodness, look at all this work I've got to do. How am I going to fit this in my busy schedule? It's another thing I have to do. And that's another thing I have to take home and so on and so forth. So uh, what had previously happened was that uh, while she was progressing in her career, that was actually a really useful quality and really useful trait that she was going out and volunteering for. But then she was fusing with that so much that it started to get in the way. So she was putting her hand up when she simply didn't have the time. And so she was us using up her evenings, she was using up her weekends, and so on and so forth. And there was less time with her children. So we, we broke this down and we looked at she's trying to actually get rid of the thoughts. And in diffusion, in cognitive diffusion, what we're actually looking to do is to not hold these thoughts so tightly, not to grab them and hold on and, 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 and somewhat adopt them as, as, as this uh, uh, almighty encompassing truth. 
we're not interested in truth uh, in act, we're interested in what's of benefit, what's of use, what's of value. And these really weren't beneficial for her. They were coming up over and over and over again, but they had no benefit in this scenario of, of a meeting, a, 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 being in a meeting and a volunteer being called. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we what we did is we asked her to be able to hold. Uh, I'm expected to do so to hold the managers going to judge me for a little bit longer. And we practiced this in session, in actual fact. Um, and she even felt uncomfortable in session when I was calling these out. So I was saying to her, you're expected to do so, everyone's going to judge you, everyone's looking at you, their eyes are on you, you better put your hand up, hurry up because this is unbearable, this is too difficult, what's your manager going to say? So I would go out and rattle off all of these things in really quick succession like I just did and she was getting quite uncomfortable. And so we were, we were talking about how to go out and, and, and watch the process of thought. And in actual fact, what, what did it for her was to experience that it's a stream of thought, that it's not one thought, it's, it's a stream of, of thought and that she couldn't actually hold all the thoughts at the same time. Uh, her memory just simply couldn't hold that many thoughts. So what would happen is she got caught up in those, in those, uh, uh, the, the most immediate one and these were those really immediate ones. I'm expected to do so. My manager's going to judge me and no one else will. So they just kept repeating, repeating, repeating. And she just grabbed one of them and, and uh, stick her hand up. And once she stuck her hand up, that caused other, other difficulties. So that, that's how we used it. She was able to go out and, and uh, hold it for a little bit longer. So we did a, a timing sort of sequence where she would hold it for five seconds and then the next meeting she would hold it for seven seconds and the next meeting she would hold it for ten seconds and eventually someone else put their hand up and that gave her the confidence and, and in actual fact a lot of relief, not only from not being able, not having to do the extra work, but saying, hey, wait a second, these thoughts don't have to push me around. I don't have to hold on to these thoughts as, as, as these truths. I can look at what, what's of benefit, what's of value. Uh, rather than the struggle in this fight. And so it's really powerful, and, and that's diffusion in action. That's what it would look like. It's discussing these thoughts, understanding that they're thoughts, that these are not, uh, these are not all-encompassing uh, truths, that they're thoughts, their comments, uh, their criticisms, their judgments, and so on. They're not necessarily something we have to go out and fight with. So something important, Diffusion in action, that's just a little example that you can also look at how to apply it with your own clients and also maybe just take, take notice of what you might be fighting with, struggling with, um, particularly in meetings as well because most of us have this feeling. Take care.